Hi, my name is Christine of Christine Rose Photography. I am a fine art nightscape photographer and a photography educator. And my mission is really to empower new photographers to be able to get out there and capture amazing photos of the night sky. So today we are talking about the different types of Milky Way photographs. And there are actually six different types. Now, I am not taking credit for these categories of Milky Way photographs. These are actually part of a larger conversation that happens inside Facebook groups, if you believe it. You should head over, I have the link in my bio, to the Nightscaper Facebook group where there's a lot of really interesting discussion that goes on around different types of Milky Way photographs. So I do not take full credit for these, but I do fully believe in them. We are going to be talking about six types of Milky Way photographs. And I say Milky Way, but this can be night sky in general. It just so happens that most people who are starting out shooting are going to be focusing on the Milky Way. The first that we have is a single exposure. And a single exposure is defined as just that, literally one click of the shutter. Now in post-processing, there can be more done to it, but this image is just depressing the shutter once and you have that one frame to work with. Most often it's a raw file, so you can pull more information out of it. You may be adding lights, like the lights that I have here, lighting me up uh, to light up your foreground. There's lots of different things that you can do, but at the core of it, it is one single exposure. That is where I recommend most people start. And especially when I am doing my intro classes, I say, you know what? Master the single exposure. When you can do that, everything else becomes very easy. You want to do things one step at a time. And so if you start jumping in to the next types of Milky Way photographs that I'm going to talk about, there are going to be a lot of variables. And what is the variable that mess things up? It's hard to know when you are doing a lot for the first time. So what I really recommend is start here. Start at the single frame, master that as best as you can with your current gear, and then move on. And the place that I recommend people generally go next happens to be the next category, which is stacked. And stacked images are basically multiple images, which are then brought together to get rid of whatever is different. And so in night photography, what happens is when we are taking multiple images of the sky, the stars are the same. Unless we're photographing a meteor shower um, or some event happening in the sky, the stars and the pattern of light that the stars create is the same. The noise that we photograph is different. So by taking multiple images, and generally it's between 10 and 15 images, you will stack those images together using different software. So you can use Photoshop, though I don't generally recommend it. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, or on a Mac, Star Landscape Stacker, or on a Windows machine, you're gonna use Sequitor. You will use this software to stack together these images and it looks at everything that's different and it gets rid of it. So then you're left with an image that is generally noise free. And this is where I recommend people go second. Because if you are running into the issue that your camera is quite noisy. This is a way that you can get images that have significantly less noise in them without having to upgrade your gear. However, if you haven't mastered the single shot, a stack shot is just a bunch of singles that then has this extra step of processing built in. Okay, number three is a blend. Now you can do a blend with a single shot for the sky or with a stack shot for the sky. And this is where you might start to realize that things can get a little bit complicated. So a blend is defined as having your camera on a tripod and the tripod position and camera position does not move, but you take multiple exposures. So I would take an exposure for the sky but maybe I'm in an immensely dark sky location. It's just beautiful. The stars are gorgeous. There's no light around anywhere. That image that I have exposed for the sky is probably going to have a foreground that's quite dark, but maybe the foreground itself is absolutely beautiful. So I may decide that I want the foreground to be lit by starlight, which yes, is a thing. It just so happens to take a lot longer. So if my exposure for the sky was say 20 seconds and 
I now want to take a picture for the foreground, my foreground shot is probably more like four minutes or even maybe eight minutes long to get enough light for the foreground. Now I can take those photographs one after another and blend them together in Photoshop. That is what we call a blend. There are other types of blends. You can do a moonlight blend, which is you would take a photograph of the stars when the moon has set, so either after it's set or before it rises, and then take a photograph of the landscape with moonlight on it. That's a moonlight. Uh, the one I described before is a starlight. You can do a sunrise or sunset blend or a blue hour blend where you take your foreground image at sunrise, sunset, or blue hour, leave your tripod in the same position until it's full dark, and take a photograph of the stars. So for me, this is the next kind of logical place to go to. Now, what happens here is you're introducing another variable, which is Photoshop, and that's a big variable. I have a whole class, Photoshop 101 for Milky Way photographers, that is dedicated to Photoshop because when you have two images that need to be merged together, you're going to be doing so using Photoshop. So this is not the place to start unless you happen to be a Photoshop master already because there is now another variable that comes into play. Okay, the next category is tracked, and that is using a star tracker device. So for instance, I have the iOptron Skyguider Pro to mount your camera on it and take longer exposures of the stars without the stars moving. Really, really fantastic. You get more color in your images and it's absolutely beautiful. However, your camera is rotating on the tracker. So your foreground is blurry. Unless you want to have a very interesting image with a completely blurry foreground, you need to take at least two images, one tracked image for the sky and one untracked image for the foreground. And then you will have to blend those together in Photoshop. So generally by definition, you are not taking just a tracked photo, you are taking a tracked and blended image. Okay, that brings us to the next, our fifth, which is a panoramic. Now, often you will see single first, pano second. The reason that I'm bringing panoramic here is because a panoramic is basically like a daytime panoramic. It is multiple shots that are stitched together to give a wider field of view than you can get with the lens that you shot on. The the thing that comes up here is that you can do a panoramic of singles, which means you just literally pan and you take one single frame for each. You can also do a panoramic and do stacked. So this one frame of your panoramic here is 12 images. This is 12 images. This is 12 images. This is 12 images. This is 12 images. You can do that and do a blend. So you do the stacked images plus a separate foreground image. Stacked plus foreground, stacked plus foreground, stacked foreground, stacked foreground. You can do it tracked. Track your sky, do separate foreground images. So panoramics can be all of them put together depending on the level of detail and how you want your image to look. And the last category is a composite category. And composite category, for my definition, and what most people will agree with, a composite image is when you are putting together two or more images that are taken from a different tripod position. Now, for myself, when I do composite images, I will try to use a star image taken at a similar focal length to that of my foreground image. I think it looks more believable. But frankly, a composite, you can do whatever you want. And with composite images, there are people who will say it is cheating or they are not real. No, they are not real. But they can also be whatever you want. And that can be something that's quite fun to do as well. How can you exercise your imagination to create something that doesn't exist? It's pretty amazing that we can do that. So let's just do a quick recap here. We have a single frame. We have stacked. We have blend. We have tracked. We have pano and we have composite. We have six different types of images. I've already touched on this. You should start with a single. If you're not yet comfortable taking one single really good frame of the Milky Way, please start there. If you've done that and you are now at the point where uh, it's really good, but you know it's pretty noisy, move on to stacked get good at stacking. You're gonna take multiple photographs, stack them together, and you will notice a significant increase in the overall quality of your image. After that, 
what do you want to do? For me personally, I really like to do blended images. So I will take likely a tracked image of the sky because I want to get as much light as possible for my sky. And then I will blend it with an image of the foreground. Maybe I've added light to that. Maybe I'm waiting for the moon to rise. Maybe I'm just using starlight for a soft diffuse look. I really enjoy the relationship between the sky and the land. And I want to see as much of the foreground as possible because generally it's pretty important to my image. So I tend to do a lot of blended exposures using a tracked sky and also I'm generally tracking and stacking my sky. So not only am I doing a two minute exposure of the sky, I'm doing 10 two minute exposures of the sky. Yes, I'm shooting for 20 minutes on one single thing um, and then probably doing a foreground shot that's anywhere between another four to eight minutes. That's currently what I really like to shoot. Maybe I'm going to shift and be interested in doing more panoramics, maybe more composites. I don't know. Who knows? What you need to do is think about what is it that you're interested in and where are you at right now? So what I talked about before, are you at a single, are you at stacked, etc. And then what kind of images do you like to see? How do they fit into single, stacked, blend, tracked, pano, composite? How do they fit into that? And then what skills do you need to go forward? I will say that you need to get your camera skills first, and then second, you're going to need to get your computer skills and be able to confidently work within Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm interested to hear where you're at. What kind of Milky Way images are you taking right now? And what kind are you interested in taking? Hit me up in the comments and let me know.